All right, here we go. So now we gotta learn how to go backwards, right? So last time we'd learned how to take a derivative. Like, here's your function. I wanna know how quickly it's changing at a given time. I'm gonna take the derivative. What if, though, what if the function that we're given tells us how quickly something is changing? And we wanna figure out what the original function is. Oh, well, to do that, we have to use what is called bum, 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 the antiderivative. Also, sometimes called, more often called, I'm looking at me instead of you, which is weird. It's bad. I'll be better about this. It's my, I put that on my to-do list. <laughs> um, I'm having this conversation with myself. Hello. Nice to see you. I see you cut your hair. All right, sorry. I don't know why. I'm being silly. All right, here we go. So, <laughs> antiderivative. Uh, we get to go backwards, all right? We're going to be given a function that tells us how quickly something is changing. We're going to find out what the original function was, sort of. To do that, we're going to use an antiderivative, sometimes called an indefinite integral. We'll learn more with the emphasis of this word indefinite in just a minute. All right, so here we go. So let's start with a, with kind of a quicker review of where we were. So in the last video, let me begin this. In the last video, we learned that if we know our function f of x, then we can find the rate of change, i.e. the derivative, by using the rules that we learned, right? And so this is the derivative of f with respect to x is our rate of change, right? It's our slope. It's how quickly f of x goes up or down per unit on my x-axis, right? But again, what if the function that we're given is that rate of change? Then what that means is there's some other function that it's the derivative of. Okay, and I'm doing it again. I'm looking at the wrong, man, I'm terrible. Do you do that? Like when you look through like photos, it's always like, where's me? Where's me? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe there's something wrong with me. All right, so what if the function that we're given, f of x, is the rate of change for some other function, capital F of x? So notice the notation here, and this is the same notation you'll probably get in your calc class, which is why I did it this way. So there's little f of x, and there's capital F of x. All right, so we're given this function, little f of x. And little f of x represents the rate of change for capital F of x. Okay? So what that means then is the rate at which capital F changes with respect to x is little f of x. It's kind of like saying capital F prime of x. We've just given it a new name and called it little f of x. Okay? All right. So, but our question is, we want to know, we already know, like we're given little f of x, we want to find big f of x, right? We're trying to find that original function. What thing did we take the derivative of to get little f of x, right? So let's talk notation here. So, uh, this sentence right here, I'm going to circle, go ahead and circle this in red if I can get my smart board to cooperate. So this, f of x is the derivative of f of x. That's the worst sentence I've ever said. Little f of x is the derivative of big f of x. In math speak is this, right? Okay, so we already know how to write it using derivative notation, okay? Another way of saying the same thing using integral or antiderivative notation is in words you would say this. You would say the antiderivative of little f of x is f of x, right? Okay, so the derivative of big F is little f. The antiderivative of little f is big F. So the anti sort of undoes the original thing, all right? Now, uh, after a week or so, you probably won't use the word antiderivative and you'll just use the word integral. So those, the word antiderivative and integral, as far as I know, are synonymous. Your math teacher may tell you differently, um, but yeah. All right. Um, so what notation do we use? So how do we write the integral of a function or the antiderivative of a, fu of a function? All right, and here's what it looks like. So everything that's written uh, up here in this purple circle, we could rewrite using integral notation, and it would look like this. So we're trying to figure out what big F of X is. So it looks like this. So it's the integral of, so that's like a capital letter S, but stretched out real, real long like, okay? So this is the integral of our rate of change 
gives us, oops, with respect to x. So this little dx here is just notational. It's just telling you what's on your horizontal axis. Okay? It's telling you what variable, when, when, you, when you talk about your rate, like I can say I'm driving at five miles per hour. Hours, would, the number of hours would be my x-axis, right? Um, so the dx just tells you what's going on in your horizontal axis. Like if it's dt, then it'll be time on the horizontal axis. If it's uh, you know, uh, dp, where p is pressure, then it would be pressure on the horizontal axis, whatever. All right, so the integral of f of x, uh, the integral of little f of x with respect to x, dx, is capital F of x. So... This and this mean exactly the same thing in much the same way as, suppose I tell you that y equals x squared. I could also say those both mean the same thing, right? They're just different ways of expressing them. This one is solved for y. This one is solved for x. Over here... This one is solved for little f of x. This one is solved for big f of x. Okay? They say the same thing, just different notation. All right? So the notation here, honestly, I think is just kind of the confusing part, and then just remembering what your f's are, right? Which one's the rate of change? Okay? The rate of change is the derivative. If you take the integral of the rate of change, it gives you the original function. Okay? Um, bah, 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 bah. And when I type it, this is what it'll look like on your worksheets. This integral symbol is more like a on worksheets. Okay? All right. So, let's kind of summarize. So, to take an integral of a function, the question you just need to ask yourself is, the derivative of what other thing gives me this? Okay? So, let's do an example. So, suppose I told you this. Suppose I told you that f of x is 4. Okay? And I want to know what the integral of this is, what the antiderivative of this is. Okay? In other words, the derivative of what thing is this? Okay? So let's take the integral of f of x with respect to x. Okay? That's the same as saying, what's the integral of 4 with, res oops, with respect to x? So this is kind of just telling me what's on my x-axis. So this is what I want to focus on. I want to figure out, what thing do I have to take the derivative of to get 4? Well, to figure it out, basically what you got to do is you've got to reverse your power rule. Reverse your, your, the polynomial rules that we learned, right? So maybe before we get into that, what this is really telling us is that, remember, derivative is a slope, right? So this is telling me that my function has a slope of 4. Well, there's a ton of functions like that, right? Look. Oh, where is it? Here we go. Oh, fiddlesticks. Oh, man, I was so excited when I had this all set up, and then I forgot to, forgot to go back and fix it. Oh, super fail. <laughs> Um, so here are three different lines that all have a slope of 4, right? 4x, oh man, here are our four functions which all have a slope of 4. 4x, 4x, oh my goodness, 4x, 4x plus 8, 4x minus 6, there's an infinite number of them, right? Because it's got to be 4x plus or minus something. This is what makes it indefinite. There's a gazillion functions that have a slope of 4. There are an infinite number of, um, oops, infinite number of functions that have 4 as a derivative. So, what that tells us is this integral is 4x plus something. All right, so C here is what we call the constant of in integration. Constant of integration. All right, 
pretend I had room to write out the word integration. All right. So in order to know what this is, we have to know what's called an, an initial condition. All right. So let me, I'm going to do this. All right. So in order for this to make sense, we need what we call an initial condition. So let's go back. So, oops. Um, so here's that same problem again, right? So it says, uh, so it says, suppose f of x tells us how quickly f of x changes. So that's basically just telling us that capital F prime of x is f of x, or the derivative of capital F of x is f of x, little f of x, right? That's all that's telling us, right? Um, and in fact, it tells us that f of x is 4. Little f of x is 4, right? All right? So what that means is our slope is 4. So we're right back to here, right? There's a gazillion of them, right? All these lines have a slope of 4. So which one is it? Well, in order to decide which one it is, we need what we call an initial condition. Okay, so all of this blue stuff here is telling me that my original function has a slope of 4. By original function, I mean capital F of x. So f of x is, as I said a minute ago, 4x plus something. Now, this initial condition is going to let me figure out what that something is. So I can combine this blue fact here that I just underlined in red with my red initial condition. So f of x is 9 if x is 3, right? Because capital F of 3 equals 9 plus c. Oh, now I can solve it and I can figure out what c is. So 9 equals 12 plus c. Subtract 12 from both sides and you get negative 3 equals c. So it must be big F of x is 4x plus 3. There's my original function, okay? So in order for a, an indefinite integral to be useful, you have to have this initial condition. If you don't have an, have an initial condition, uh, then you're going to use what is called a definite integral, which we will do in the next video, all right? All right, so let's do another one real quick, and then I'm going to have you try one on your own, all right? So suppose we had this. Suppose I gave you uh, g of x is, I don't know, uh, let's do 6x uh, squared. No, I want to go bigger so we have more examples. So we'll go, I need to make my pen skinny or we're going to run out of room. Here we go. All right, so g of x is, let's go uh, 6x to the fifth. We'll start with an easy one, minus, uh, let's do 12x to the, Sorry, you know what would have been cool is if I had prepared one instead of just making it up off the top of my head. Uh, let's do 4x. Wow, I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, I'll have to edit this. Hopefully, I'll have my editing software by then. All right, so back on the game. All right, so we'll do plus 20x to the fourth minus uh, 16 x cubed plus 8 x squared minus 7 x plus 2 and oops and uh, the derivative of capital G of capital G with respect to x is little g of x and capital G of I don't know 1 is, let's say, 12. All right? So here's what we're going to do. Find capital G of x. All right? All right, so long story short, too late, we need to figure out the derivative of what is this mess. So in order to answer that, we got to kind of work backwards, right? So the derivative of what would give us this? So remember, when you take a derivative, your power goes down by one. So to undo it, you got to go up by one.
but you also, when you take the derivative, you bring that power down to the front. So this guy, well here, so let's, let's write our notation first. So what we want to do here is we're looking at undoing a derivative, right? So what we really want, capital G of x is the integral of little g of x with respect to x. So that's, notationally, that's what we're doing here. All right, so what thing did I take the derivative of to get this? All right, so let's see. So when you take a derivative, your power goes down by one. So right now I'm at x to the fifth. So before I took the derivative, I must have been at x to the sixth. And then when you take the derivative, you bring this down and multiply, right? Um, oh, I think I'm good because I think if I take the derivative of x to the sixth, that'll give me 6x to the fifth, right? The derivative of x to the sixth is 6x to the fifth. Okay. All right, let's do the next one. So let's see. So minus, let's see. It's got to be, oh, I, I did x to the fifth twice, didn't I? Well, that was silly. Um, all right, so that's going to be, that's okay, x for practice. So once again, we've got x to the fifth. That must have been x to the sixth. And then when I, so I, when I take my derivative, I'm going to bring the 6 down. So 6 times what is 12? 6 times what is 12? Oh, 2. There you go. All right, let's do another one. Let's see. Plus 20x to the 4th. So before I took my derivative, it must have been x to the 5th. And then 5 times what gives me 20? Oh, that must be 4. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's do black. Minus, let's see, x to the, so it's x to the third. Now, before I took my derivative, it was x to the fourth. Four times what is 16? Oh, it must be four. Let's see. Something x cubed, right? Because I'm at squared now. Before I took the derivative, I would have had a three. So three times what is eight? Ugh, eight thirds, right? Okay, and I'm running out of room, so I'm going to go down a line. So we got minus 7x, so minus, let's see, that's 7x to the first, so it's got to be x squared, right? Because then when I decrease it, it'll give me the 1. So 2 times what is 7? 7 halves. And then the derivative, the int, uh, so 2, well, it's got to be just 2x, right? Plus c. All right. So now what I need to do is i got to figure out, all right, well, first of all, let's simplify this. I'm so mad at myself for doing this with these, these, the x, so, so g of x is, well, x to the sixth minus 2x to the sixth is negative x to the sixth plus 4x to the fifth minus 4x to the fourth plus 8 thirds x cubed minus 7 halves x squared plus 2x plus c, all right? And so then what we had to do is we had to plug our initial condition in to find out what c is. So g of 1 is going to be negative 1 plus 4 minus 4 plus 8 thirds minus 7 halves plus 2 plus c and solve for c. Yeah, so this all equals, oops, equals 12, right, equals 12, equals 12. So what I'm looking at is, one, is 0 0.16 repeating plus C equals 12, which means C must be, what would that be, 11.83 repeating. So now I can plug that back in to this original mess, all right? Okay, this example got a little out of control. Your, the problems on your homework won't be this long. But the point is, what thing do you take the derivative of to get this? Now you try one. All right, so here uh, it says, suppose a company has profits which are changing at a rate of this. So that's your derivative. So the profits are changing with respect to time at a rate of 6t squared minus 4t plus 3. And the original profits are, are given fact is that 
after two hours, the profits are $14,000. And we're trying to find out what is the original function. And then once we've got that, we can figure out what it is after seven hours. All right, why don't you give that one a go? I am going to assume you've paused and done this now. So here we go. So what we are looking for is, oops, the integral of 6t squared minus 4t plus 3 with respect to time, dt. So 6t squared cubed, our power has to go up by 1, and then 3 times what is 6, minus, power has to go up by 1, 2 times what is 4, uh, plus, well that's 3t to the 0, so power goes up by 1 is that, must be 3, and then don't forget your plus c, right? Could be anything, right? Because we just don't know how much it goes up or down. Okay. All right. So now we just got to plug this in. Let's see. So so this is p of t. So 14 equals 2 times 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus c. 14 is what is this? 16 minus 8 plus 6 plus c. Uh, so what do we got? 22. Oh, well, that's funny. So we got 14 equals 14 plus c. So it turns out c is 0. So here's p of t. All right. So there you go. Indefinite integrals. The derivative of what is this? Initial condition gives you what that C constant is. Okay.